Welcome, trainers. I'm your co-host, Andrew Adam. Uh, with me is Richard Haynes. Say hello. hello to the nice people, Richard. Hello, guys. Uh, and this is your first Teams of the Week segment. Uh, it's a new segment that Richard and I are going to be bringing to you each week. Uh, we'll basically be covering four teams, giving you suggestions, strategies, ideas of different move sets, uh, and just trying to help improve your overall game and your overall team. Uh, so that you can stand the best chance in the Pokemon Battle Federation. Um, Richard, you got anything to say about this segment? You drafted me into it, uh, kind of a last-minute thing, but here I am. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, Richard and I decided we've both been in competitive battling for a while now, um, and we, we play fairly often and try to do the best we can in this league and really put a lot of effort into it. So we're just trying to give you guys suggestions uh, they're by no means the only thing you can use, the only thing you can run. Uh, we just want to give you new ideas uh, because the more Pokemon or the more people you have uh, giving you input on your team, the more different ideas you're going to have and different sets you can have that will help you win more matches. Mm -hmm. uh, so without further ado, we're going to go to our first team. Uh, the first team of the week is going to be Rosin Shuri John. Uh, John St. Laurent is the owner of this team. Uh, and his Pokemon are Clefable, Magnezone, Galvantula, Crobat, Arcanine, Flygon, Gligar, Swampert, and Shiftry. Uh, so he has a nine Pokemon team right now, so he can really switch things up and do all sorts of different things with his team. Uh, first impressions on his team, I look at it and I see a lot of Pokemon who can use either Volt Switch or U-Turn, uh, so he can form... Uh, what is sometimes referred to as a Volt Turn Core, uh, that can basically keep him going, uh, give him a lot of offensive momentum while damaging uh, his opponent's team. You get the matchups that you want, and it's really an effective way to run an offensive team. Do mm -hmm. um, you want to talk a little bit about yeah, his core of Pokemon with Clefable and Magnezone? And anything else? I mean, I see both of them as nice defensive Pokemon. Uh, I'm not awfully familiar with using Magnezone, but I did have Clefable, I believe that was Season 2, and he definitely had some clutch survivals uh, in during the playoffs, so I would definitely um, recommend using him 95% of the time. Uh, hmm. Magnezone can hit hard, especially with choice specs. Uh, it's a shame that he doesn't have levitate. <laughs> he does. He does have magnet rise if he ever wants to run a gimmicky set where he can eliminate that weakness. Does he have anything else that can really benefit from that? Really? Benefit from what? Magnet rise. Um, uh, I think magnet rise just works on that one Pokemon. Okay. I could be wrong, but but he does have he does have a lot of Pokemon with an yes. ground immunity. So that weakness isn't that scary. He has Crobat, he has Flygon, Gligar. Um, if it's ever a problem, he can just slap an air balloon on that. Yeah, you can always use an air balloon, and that kind of mitigates that problem if it's if you're really running into that. It's a detail a lot of trainers miss is when it tells you they have an air balloon. So you still mm -hmm. click on Earthquake thinking that's going to take care of the problem. Yeah, and sometimes you can just waste an entire turn just Earthquaking and not realizing that they have an air balloon. Use that to your advantage. Yeah. Uh, so he has. So with that, he kind of has uh, a little bit of a uh, weakness to ground types and bulky grounds. He has a little bit of trouble getting through them. Um, but he does have Crobats and Flygons and mm -hmm. things with Levitate that can kind of handle them. All right. Uh, his Magnezone and his Arcanine are weak to ground, but that's that's pretty much it. He can handle ground types pretty well still. Yeah. Um, he has some faster Pokemon like Crobat and Galvantula, uh, but he also has some bulky Pokemon with Magnezone, Clefable, and Arcanine that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, I see this as a balanced team. Uh, it can handle a lot of threats. Uh, it can deal with teams in different ways. It doesn't have to just sweep through them. It doesn't have to outlast them with hazards. And you can always mix it up. He's ha he has nine Pokemon, as you said. Yeah. Yeah, so he can, he can run any number of things... Uh, and then the final thing is that he does have, uh, within his first five Pokemon, 
He has a little bit of a stealth rock weakness. Uh, he has uh, Crobat, Galvantula, and Arcanine, which are all weak to rocks. Yes. So he's got to be careful with that. But when I, I actually drafted the latter half of his team, his last four Pokemon, and basically I just drafted as many Defoggers as possible in that last round. Um, so if he does have something that runs Defog, like uh, Flygon, Gligar, Shift Tree, or Crobat, they can all run Defog. As long as he has something there, uh, the Stealth Rock weakness can be dealt with. Yeah, and he doesn't have anything that's four times weak against it either, so... Mm -hmm. You can definitely take one, but I wouldn't recommend taking more than one Stealth Rocks to a single Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, it's just he's just got to play around and be careful. If there are Rocks up, you don't want to be switching in Crobat and Arcanine all the time. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and go over some of his teams and some of the sets we have recommended for him. Uh, basically, uh, I drafted up some teams in Pokemon Showdown. Uh, that I'm going to share with you now. Uh, and basically, we just went ahead and created teams, what we thought would be uh, good ideas, um, and we'll go over some of the movesets that we've recommended, and yeah, so the first moveset that uh, Richard and I were talking about a little bit was the Choice Specs Magnezone, as you can see here. Um, he obviously has Choice Specs, he runs Thunderbolt, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power, either Fire or Ice, depending on your opponent's team and what they're weak to, and Volt Switch. Um, I run him with uh, all special attack and a modest nature to give him as much power as possible. Uh, I gave him 84 speed EVs. I think that's some sort of uh, benchmark. I think it might outspeed base 70s or something. Uh, and the rest goes into bulk. You can run him with more speed or more bulk, depending on your preference. Uh, and then his ability is actually what... I used Magnezone in Season 2, and his ability was actually one of the most interesting parts about Magnezone. Um, you know, everybody knows that he has Magnet Pole, he can function as a Steel Trapper, uh, but he can also run Analytic. Uh, if your opponent doesn't really have a lot of Steel Pokemon that you want to be trapping and trying to take out individually, uh, then you can run Analytic. And anything that switches into Magnezone or goes before Magnezone is going to take... Uh, 1.3 times extra damage from analytic. You have the 1.5 times from choice specs. So you're basically doing 1.95 times of your normal attacks power. And with the Volt Switch, uh, with Pokemon switching in to take attacks and hitting them with the Volt Switch and switching out, you're doing a ton of damage and getting your choice of the matchup after that. Uh, you have anything to say about that, Richard, or any other ideas from Magnezone? Isn't Volt Switch physical? That no. might sound like a dumb question, but I can never remember. Yeah, Volt Switch is special, and u turn is physical. All right, never mind. No <laughs> objection. Yeah, yeah, the only thing you have to worry about is uh, ground type switching in to take your Thunderbolts and Volt Switches, and that'll stop you from switching out at all. Um, but you have Flash Cannon to cover them. You have yeah. Hidden Power Ice if you choose to run it, so... Uh, the other set that I would recommend would be Choice Band Crobat. Um, I think Choice Band, uh, your options with Crobat are basically a Choice Band or kind of a bulky set with Defog and Roost. Uh, but I think Choice Band Crobat really gives John a better option to, you know, pull off those strong U-turns and clean up late with Brave Bird. Uh, the two most important moves on this set are definitely Brave Bird and U-turn. Uh, Brave Bird is going to be your late game cleaning option. It'll do damage in the middle of the game too, but it's going to do a lot of damage uh, based on a, an attack set of over 400 with Choice Band. Uh, it's a 120 base power stab attack, so it's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, and your U-turn is going to keep the momentum in your favor. Uh, it's going to get chip damage on each Pokemon, and like I said, you get the matchup you want. And the other two moves are uh, just some coverage moves. You don't want to be using them a whole lot, but if you are in the late game, you don't want to be killing yourself with Brave Bird. They do work for that purpose. And sometimes you just need to sneak an attack in there that they're not expecting. Right, yeah. The, you, you definitely want to have other options, and with the Choice Band, those give you uh, mm -hmm. some options there. Uh, you, could, you could also use Roost on that, even with a Choice Band, um, for that emergency recovery situation, but it's, it's up to you. Uh, run them with max speed just to 
max speed and a plus speed nature just to get them the most uh, speed possible. Uh, the other set that I recommended with this was Physical Wall Arcanine. Um, and Arcanine makes a good physical wall for several reasons, actually. Uh, first of all, he has Intimidate, uh, which cuts your opponent's attack uh, by one and a half times each time he switches in. Uh, second, he has Will-O-Wisp, which can cut your opponent's attack by one half if you use it. And third, he actually is a fairly bulky Pokemon. Here you can see that his uh, base HP is pretty high, and his defense and special defense are also pretty sizable for uh, a Pokemon with his kind of offensive presence. He doesn't really have a weak stat there, um, and so you can run him with a multitude of different sets. Uh, but basically this set is meant to come in, absorb damage, uh, do some damage with Rocky Helmet if possible, uh, pull off a Will-O-Wisp, and you can recover with Morning Sun. As long as there isn't sand or hail or rain up, you're going to recover half your HP with that. Did you have anything on that, Richard? That's my Arcanine. <laughs> yes, yes, the <laughs> the debacle of Don Fan and Arcanine <laughs> and all the Pokemon that we didn't know where they were going. I also, you know, could have had Ferrothorn, but I'm, I've, I've moved past it. Let's try not to be too salty about it. <laughs> and then the last set that I uh, strongly recommend is we talked about using Defog, so uh, you can use Flygon or Gligar. Uh, you can e actually use either one with the exact same move set here. Um, but basically, you're going to be running Earthquake for some stab coverage to do some damage. Uh, Defog to clear hazards from the field. Uh, for those of you who don't no, Defog clears the hazards on both your side uh, and the opponent's side. So if you both have Stealth Rock set up, or in John's case, if you have Sticky Web set up with Galvantula, then that's going to clear off the field too. Um, and then Roost to recover, so you can switch in and Defog as many times as you need, uh, and U-turn to, again, get out of there after you've done your Defogging and do some damage. I guess in this... In this situation, Flygon might be better over Gligar just because it gives you a more physical offensive presence. Because otherwise, you only really have Crobat and a defensively uh, oriented Arcanine. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, Gligar just doesn't have the offensive presence that uh, Flygon does. Uh, he's definitely better and bulkier with uh, Eviolite. But, yeah. but either really works, uh, depending on... Uh, whether or not you find yourself lacking in defensive coverage or offensive momentum, you can really use either. I guess the point here, John, is that you've got nine Pokemon. Mix it up and definitely look at who you're going to be playing because sometimes there's an obvious weakness that you might want to, if I can use the word, exploit. And <laughs> and see see if you, if you can pay more attention to being defensive than offensive, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, as a, as a final strategy for John, stop my screen sharing. Yeah, as a final strategy for John, uh, basically, try to deal chunks of damage with U-turns and Volt Switches, uh, and that'll help you uh, damage your opponent's team and also get the matchup you want um, with typing and physical and special matchups that you want. Uh, build that offensive momentum, and then you can clean up with your fast Pokemon, your Crobats, um, your Flygons, potentially, or you can set up with Fable and sweep with him to win. All right, well, I guess, briefly, uh, if I can click all the right buttons. Um, I also, I didn't quite do as much effort as Drew did, but I did kind of put together a, a quick six Pokemon that I would definitely think about um, just some random team, team builder I found. And while we kept the same basic core of the Clefable, the Arcanine, the Magnezone, I actually went for Gligar, Swampert, and Shiftry in contrast to the other three that Drew picked. Um, and I like to note the uh, all of the resistances that you have available. You resist everything in some way or another. So with my sample team, I picked Gligar over Flygon, uh, for a more defensive presence, and Swampert and Shiftry, I'm 
familiar with Swampert if you want to run the uh, Stealth Rock. Swampert has always done well for me there. And the sucker punches and stuff that come from Shift 3 can always hurt. Um, but it's interesting to note that all you resist everything. With this team, everything is resisted in some form or another. You might have some problems with ice types and water types, but everything else seems to be pretty good. Uh, and, you know, ice types you can deal with with Arcanine and Magnezone. Yep, definitely. Um, and water types you can resist with Shift Tree, and I think that might be your only resistance. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a definitely an idea for a more defensive spread if you want to go with that. It's not why I picked them, but when I plotted it, it was like, holy crap, you, you resist everything. You could probably tank most hits. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind. Cool. All right, so the next team that we are covering this week is Heart of the Cards, and that is our new member, J.P. Kernan. Welcome welcome to the PBF, J.P. Um, he has on his team Talonflame, Dragonite, Mamoswine, Venusaur, Explod, Tangrowth, and Machamp. And I believe that Jeremy drafted this team. Uh, I do not remember. I, 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 think, I think maybe he drafted just, like, Explod. Yeah, I think actually that's I think that's the case. Okay. I think JP drafted the first four, Jeremy drafted Explode, and then he picked up Machamp and uh, Venusaur in that supplemental draft. Uh, he picked up Machamp and Tangrowth. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're right. He picked Venusaur fourth. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me get my notes. I guess I, I'll go first here. Yeah, go um, ahead. I actually battled JP uh, the first day of the season and. I was I was anxious. I'm always anxious when I battle anybody in the league. Uh, just butterflies in the stomach, I guess you can say, because I never know how it's going to go. Um, and when I saw his team, I was actually surprised he didn't bring Mamoswine. I've always had trouble with Mamoswine, so I prepared for it. But overall, your team's fairly well balanced, but there is a really big problem here with Stealth Rocks, which we'll probably go into to more even more. Yeah, uh, he does have a uh, weakness to Stealth Rocks. Only two Pokemon, but Talon's Flame and Dragonite are both tremendously crippled by Stealth Rocks because Talon Flame takes half of its health every time it switches in. Um, and Dragonite loses multi-scale. Right. As soon as Dragonite switches into Stealth Rocks, he loses his multi-scale, uh, which hinders his defensive capabilities a lot. And takes a quarter of his health, which is a sizable amount. Mm -hmm. Um... So we were looking at his team and discussing it because Richard had battled him and we saw that there's really not anyone who can use Rapid Spin or Defog. Um, Dragonite's the only one who has it in his move pool. Yep. But mm -hmm. if you're using Defog on Dragonite, that's defeating the entire purpose of Dragonite. Um, and he has to switch into it to Defog so his multi-scale would be broken anyways. Uh, so Defog Dragonite is an option uh, but maybe a better option is someone who can use Taunt. I believe that Talonflame might be the only Pokemon on its team who can use Taunt, but it does have the speed to pull it off. Um, it can run a little bit more defensive set to be able to Taunt and pull it off. Um, and so that's one of your options uh, for dealing with Stealth Rocks. Uh, the, the other option is to just be careful as to when you switch in Dragonite and Talonflame so they're not taking massive chunks of their health every time if you switch into Stealth Rocks that have been set yeah. If you don't have uh, a, a way to deal with Stealth Rocks in general, you might have to just lead Dragonite and hold, hope for the best. Uh, and that's not a terrible option, necessarily. Right, right. I've, I've used Dragonite competitively with the 3DS, and I'm very disappointed I couldn't get my hands on it, but I, I bid really conservatively early on. And weakness policy, Dragonite, as long as you're not trying to take on stab ice moves, you can typically uh, do a lot of damage afterwards, especially if you sneak in a, a Dragon Dance or something on top of that. Yeah, and, and, and he has the most powerful user of stab ice moves and Mammoth Swine, so he doesn't even have to worry about that, uh, ruining yep. his Dragonite. Okay. Um, what else? What did I say about his team? Oh, so he has his uh, he has late, gleam, late game cleaners and Dragonite and Talon Flame. Uh, that can you, you can really use to finish off the game if you've weakened their team enough. Uh, you can do a lot of damage with uh, Choice Specs, Explode, and Machamp. Um, they can basically come in and just do as much damage as possible, 
hit hard and then switch out. Uh, you can use Tangrowth as kind of a defensive cover for special and physical if it has an assault vest. Assault vest. Um, and yeah, you do have that South Rock weakness, but it is something you can work around, definitely. So, I believe... Richard, did you have move sets for this that you wanted to go over? I, I have a couple, but generically, you can pick whatever move sets you want. But something that I think might be interesting to try is using Tailwind with Talonflame. And hear me out, Exploud could definitely like the, the speed boost, and Machamp, being kind of a slow Pokemon, would definitely not say no to um, extremely fast uh, dynamic punches. In yeah, similar. Tailwind doubles your speed, correct? Yes. Is For it three turns? Four turns? Four turns. Okay, yeah. I think, I think it's the first turn you use, it counts as one turn, and then three turns after that. Uh, it's it's really popular in VGC doubles. Yeah, it's it's really really uh, yeah, like you said, popular in doubles. It's used there a lot. You just don't see it a whole lot in singles. But if uh, you know that you're gonna lose Talon Flame uh, that turn, if he's got like eight nine percent or something, you can mm -hmm. Tailwind just to get it up there. And it has priority because of Gale. Oh, you're right. That's yeah. so you would never have to worry about not getting it up as unless, long as you're unless there's a Unless there's a faster priority user or an extreme speed user, uh, yeah, it can be your last-ditch suicide attack, uh, yeah. which can bring in your Exploud and your Machamp and wreak havoc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's definitely a good option. It's something I hadn't even thought of. Um, did you have anything else? Other suggestions? Not particularly. Um, I noticed his team... He has a lot, the, uh, the Talonflame, the Mamoswine, the Machamp, they're all very physically offensive. Uh, Venusaur, Exploud, Tangrowth, I believe Tangrowth is actually physical, is it not? Uh, you mean with attacking? Yeah. I think his stats are about even. Okay. but He can, he can go mixed very easily, yeah. If he wants to go with a mixed Dragonite, too, that is also <laughs> a possibility if he needs to get that in there. Yeah. Because Dragonite does get a lot of nice coverage moves with Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, maybe Draco Meteor. Um, so that's always a possibility, too. Yeah, absolutely. And if you and if you run a weakness policy on him and can happen to get that off, um, that's going to increase your attack and special attack by two stages each. So you can fire off any sort of mix set um, with weakness policy, and it's going to be greatly boosted by that weakness policy. Which is maybe where you want that Tailwind to kind of show up. Yeah. <laughs> Tail, Tailwind is definitely a good idea because it can really uh, turn some of your offensive wall breakers into sweepers. So, yeah, that's definitely something to keep Speed in mind. Speed control is what you need. Yeah. Um, another set that I had in mind... Let's go to my screen share. Another set I had in mind was Assault Vest Tangrowth. I know in his first battle he had used a Sunny Day um, and a couple other moves, but... Uh, Tangrowth really does best, not with Chlorophyll as an ability, but with Regenerator, which every time you switch out, that brings back one-third of your health. Uh, so that's probably the ability you want to go with, with Tangrowth. Um, an Assault Vest takes a mediocre special defense uh, with full investment from 218 to uh, 327, uh, which makes Tangrowth very bulky both on the specially and physically defensive sides. Uh, so basically Tangrowth can soak up any kind of attack that he's not uh, tremendously weak too, um, and he can dish out some damage. If you have Leaf Storm, uh, that's going to do a ton of damage. 140 base power stab move uh, coming off of the decent special attack. Mm -hmm. It's going to do a decent bit of damage to anything. Uh, knock off obviously knocks off the item on the opponent. Uh, Earthquake gives you some coverage, and then a hidden power fire or ice is going to round out that coverage. Uh, since with Assault Vest, you can't use any sort of status moves. You can't use a Sleep Powder, you can't use a Stun Spore or a Sunny Day or anything like that. Uh, but it's definitely a good idea because you will have that recovery with Regenerator. Um, so you don't have to worry about using recovery moves like Leech Seed or anything like that. You can just switch out and regain some of that health. And then another set that I had in mind, um, Exploud. Uh, it's, it's a fairly typical set for Exploud, but just want to make JP aware of it. Um, if you put choice specs on him and have the ability Scrappy, 
his Boom Burst is going to do a lot of damage. Um, you round out the coverage moves with Focus Blast, Fire Blast, Surf, any of those, uh, just in case you think something is coming in that can handle a Boom Burst, like a Steel Pokemon right? Um, or Rock Pokemon, you can use one of your other coverage moves to deal with that. So that's, that's a pretty basic set for Explode, but it's probably one of the more important ones for his team because it really maximizes Explode's potential. Yep. And then the last set that I had uh, as a recommendation was a, kind of a different Talon Flame set. It's not really uh, meant to clean up as easily as the Choice, Burn, Choice Band Brave Bird, uh, and it doesn't have Tailwind like Richard recommended, which is definitely a good idea. But basically what this set functions as is a late-game cleaner that if it pulls off a bulk up, uh, it can really start to do some damage. Uh, you have maximum investment in special defense, uh, not a lot in defense, but after a bulk up, Town Flame becomes harder to take down without a rock move uh, at your service or without stealth rocks. Um, pull off a bulk up, you start spamming acrobatics, uh, and since you have no item, that's a base power of 110 uh, without the uh, damage or the recoil damage that Brave Bird gives you. Might be interesting if you do have to deal with stealth rocks and you can't uh, handle it any other way. A citrus berry might work here too, just so that way you kind of get that free healing and then spamming acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That'll that'll give you kind of a one-time heal. Uh, if you do have stealth rocks up, that uh, will help you out with acrobatics. Um, yeah, and and once that citrus berry's gone, acrobatics is at full power anyway, so you can kind of just take their team apart with ac by spamming acrobatics. Uh -huh. uh, you want to have Roost, obviously. If you don't if you don't have a way to clear Stealth Rocks off the field, I would say that Roost is almost mandatory with Talon Flame, um, because otherwise you're going to be killing yourself really quickly with a Brave Bird, Flare Blitz, Life Orb, any of those. You're going to be killing yourself really quickly if you're going to start at half health the first time you switch Talon Flame in. So I would definitely recommend that your set have Roost on it, uh, whether that's bulk up or tailwind or anything else, is up to you. So uh, what I would say about this team in summary is you want to kind of do damage early with Mamoswine, Expelad, Machamp, uh, and then potentially clean up with a Talonflame or Dragonite. Uh, or if you have the opportunity to pull off a Tailwind with Talonflame and switch in one of those Pokemon, they can really start to do a lot of damage uh, with Tailwind set up. Anything else on that, Richard? I think that's everything we have to say on that. Okay. Our third team of the week is going to be Amp for Awesomeness uh, with trainer Joe Giorgino. Um, he has Skarmory, Weevil, Sableye, Starmie, Florgus, Ambipom, and Charizard was his last pickup. Uh, so, thoughts on this team looking at it immediately? I know, I know you had some thoughts on this one, Richard, so I'll let you go ahead. First impression is it's incredibly, incredibly defensive. Um, with that Florgis Skarmory core, you can sponge up all kinds of hits. Um, Sableye dishing out all kinds of status effects, uh, especially with the priority available to him. And Skarmory, Flor Florgis, uh, Starmie, and Sableye all have very uh, nice recovery moves. So... You can, as long as he keeps them all up, he can slowly whittle down his opponent and use Weevil and Ambipom to kind of clean up and uh, break down some walls if he has to. Yeah, and even even Starmie can kind of come in at the end and clean up because it has just such excellent coverage that if you get any of its uh, counters out of the way or anything that can resist some of its moves, it can clean up no problem. Um. Yeah, I know you had a weakness analysis. I think I have that, yes, too. Yes, I can, I can pull it up real quick. Okay, go ahead. All right, I believe that's it. Yeah. Uh, now, it's not quite as uh, complete as uh, John's is, but he still has an insane amount of immunities to a lot of common types, particularly fighting and ground. Ground's not so special, but he does have the fighting and the dragon and psychic. But he also has a lot of uh, resistances here, too. So on top of the defensive core, he resists a lot of things and 
if he plays his cards right, he could definitely be a huge contender this season just by sitting and waiting for everybody else to wear themselves out. Yeah, and with and with Skarmory available to him too, uh, you're going to see uh, Stealth Rocks and Spikes possibly. Yep. That if you can't do anything to his team, you have to keep switching in to get the right matchup. It's going to wear you down quickly. When I first saw the team after... After the initial, my goodness, this is going to be really hard to break. My my next question was, who are the import, unfortunate fools who have to deal with this guy in their conference? <laughs> and it turns out I'm an unfortunate fool who has to deal with him in my conference. So I'm definitely looking out for you. Yeah, it's it's definitely a solid <laughs> team that you got to watch out for. Uh, that core is going to be tough to break through. My team's not particularly offensive, so we might have a stall fest when it comes time for us next week. As, as long as it's not 170 plus turns. All right, we're looking for 175. Let's go. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's a number to beat or something. <laughs> uh, so on to some of the sets that we want to recommend for that. I have a couple drawn up. So I'll pull up my screen share. Uh, so... I talked about this a little bit earlier, but Skarmory is probably going to run as many hazards. He's going to want to run as many hazards as possible because this team is going to frustrate teams and make them have to switch out a lot. Um, so I recommend that you run both Stealth Rock and Spikes on Skarmory. Uh, on this sort of team, you always want to have Stealth Rock because it affects all kinds of Pokemon, uh, whereas Spikes only affect grounded ones. But having two, two or three layers of Spikes on the ground, too, is going to wear out those grounded Pokemon really, really quickly and uh, really add to your team. Uh, I added a Rocky Helmet on there for good measure because I think I put leftovers on two other Pokemon on this team, but also Rocky Helmet is going to just help you chip away at those Pokemon even more. Anything that is attacking the Skarmory takes 16% or something like that. Um, yeah, so it attacks them with a physical move, so that's really going to help chip away at Pokemon that try to take on Skarmory offensively. Oh, the other set that I wanted to cover was Ambipom. Uh, Ambipom, I've used a lot before, actually. I used it in a Gen 4 team. Uh, and one of his better sets uses Fake Out and U-Turn. Basically, you're getting free damage with Ambipom. You pull off a Fake Out, it's damaging whatever's in front of you. Um, with a Life Orb and Technician boosting it, it becomes really powerful, uh, powerful actually. Uh, and you get a decent amount of free damage. From there, you can either U-turn out, switch into a Pokemon that can better, hand, better handle whatever your opponent has in, or you can knock off their item, or you can dish out damage and clean up with return. Uh, and with fake-outs, repeated fake-outs and U-turns and returns, uh, the Life Orb can start to chip away at you a little bit, uh, but that's why it's kind of nice that you have a Pokemon like Florgus uh, that can pass wishes to other team members and can heal Ambipom up if given the right opportunity. Uh, so you can your amp bomb can continue to be healthy and chip away at other Pokemon. And then, let me think of the last. Yeah, and then your last Pokemon that I wanted to cover was Starmie. Um, you probably want to run Rapid Spin. It's not super important on this team. You don't have a lot of rocks weaknesses uh, with Weevil, but on a stall team, you do want to try to keep. Uh, rocks and spikes and toxic spikes off the field, so having a rapid spin Starmie uh, might be a good idea still. Mm -hmm. He still gets great coverage with Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam. You can throw in a Psy Shock there too if you want to, or a Recover if you want to make him bulkier. Gold if you want to sneak in some more burns if you have to. Yeah, absolutely. You have that Sableye to throw out Will-O-Wisps to get burns, but Scald is always a good option if you want to go for more defensive over less power. Um, you can throw leftovers on him and natural cure, and you'll get a little bit more defensive use out of Skarmory in that way. Uh, so that's a fairly typical Skarmory set, but it's it's an oldie but a goodie. Um, and then Florgus, like I said, you want to probably use her as a wish passer because you're going to have Pokemon like Ambipom that can wear themselves down with Life Orb. Uh, you can have, you're you going to have Weevil, which if it switches into rocks is going to take 25%. So Wish on Florgas is generally a good idea, uh, and she can generally handle uh, any special attack that comes her way and heal it off with Wish. You can use Aromatherapy or Protect. If you're worried about status for your Pokemon, you can use Aromatherapy. And if you just want to try to keep Florgas healthy and scout out moves a little bit, you can use Protect. 
I mean, that set looks very similar to what I used last season. I think I focused more on Synthesis rather than Wish, but he worked well when I put him in there, and I mean, there's nothing a whole lot I can say about him. He, he just worked very well, especially when I needed him to. I know you ran a Calm Mind set at some point last season, too. I, I typically switched them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Wish was definitely switched out with Synthesis most of the time. Depending on who I was battling, it might have been Toxic or Calm Mind. Uh, I don't think I used anything more than Moonblast. You, did you ever use a Hidden Power Fire or anything? I might have had it on a team just pre just to prepare for something. Yeah. But overall, that set looks extremely familiar to what, or, or similar to what I used before. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty typical set with Florgus, but there's there's a couple different options with her. Um, and basically just got to look at the opposing team and see what's going to work the best. Yep. Um, so those are all the movesets that we're kind of recommending. Um, the general strategy for this team is going to be you want to do chip damage with your fake outs on your Amber Palm. And you can run fake out on the Weavile if you want to. Uh, your Rocky Helmet on Skarmory, U-turns from Amber Palm or whatever else. Uh, and you're going to want to set up hazards because you're going to frustrate teams uh, with your good defensive core. So if you get hazards out, they're going to be switching a lot, and they're going to end up doing damage to themselves. Um, with this one, you don't have a ton of really strong offensive Pokemon, uh, but you do have Pokemon that are really reliable at cleaning up teams like Weavile, Ambipom, Starmie. So you want to prevent them from gaining offensive momentum with your core, uh, four switches, rack up damage, and then when you get the opportunity, you can finish off the team with either Starmie or a Weavile or an Ambipom. Okay, so our final team is going to be CC Delta Squad, and that is with Emi Ronzala Firase. Uh, he's coming back to the PBF, so welcome back, Emi Ronzala. I think you go by Anzen. I'm just going to say that from now on because it's a lot easier to say. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of battling Anza for my first battle of the week, so I will talk not a whole lot about that match, but have some ideas for him that I gave him already based on that battle and what his team's strengths are. So he has Garchomp, Azumarill, Scolipede, Smeargle, Nidoking, Feraligator, and Drapion. And I think this is, yeah, this is one that Jeremy drafted. Uh, Anza wasn't there on the first day of the draft, uh, but he ended up picking up Feraligator and Drapion. But uh, Jeremy did a good job drafting his team. Uh, right away, I see Scolipede uh, recently departed from the Magic Carpet ride uh, onto b bigger and better heights. Uh, and I see Smeargle. Both of those are extraordinarily good setup Pokemon and support Pokemon. Um, you can baton pass speed with Scolipede very easily. Uh, Smeargle, you can also use baton pass. Uh, I think I saw him use Shell Smash and baton pass before, which scared the hell out of me. Um, but he can also run things like Spore, Sticky Web, Stealth Rock, any of oh, those. Which interesting. Are very During that match, did he not have a white herb for Smeargle? after Shell Smashing. Yeah, he had a Focus Sash. Okay. Which I, I understand using either. Um, white, white Herb will remove your negative boost from Shell Smash, and that'll make your physical and special defense not drop at all, which Shell Smash usually drops them. But I think he used a Focus Sash because he was worried about not being able to uh, have Smeargle survive uh, long did, enough to pass off this. Who pass that to? I think it was a Drapion? Yeah, he passed it to Drapion. Okay. Because I know Drapion still took a couple of hits, but he might have been better off having that white herb. Yeah, yeah. if you're going to be uh, using cell, Shell Smash and Baton Pass, um, Focus Ash or White Herb are definitely both good options. Yeah. And Focus, if you don't use Focus Ash on Smeargle, you can use him on Scolipede, uh, which can give him a little bit more reliable uh, Baton Passing capabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, Besides the support Pokemon and Smeargle and Skullpede and even Drapion to an extent who can set up Toxic Spikes and knock off and all of that, um, he has really, really good receivers of speed and attack baton passes. Um, Azumarill can take speed and attack and just wreak havoc on a team because of huge power. Uh, Garchomp is always a scary Pokemon to face, and if you have boost on him, it's even worse for your team. And Nidoking is someone who has amazing coverage but lacks the speed. I think only has 80 base speed. 
um, 85 base speed. Well, it really lacks the speed to sweep through teams, but if you pass one or two speed boosts to him, uh, he's off and, and running. If you can make a modest nature in that case, um, and yeah, he's he's a great special or physical attacker. Uh, generally, you want to run him special, but um, if you get him speed, he's going to work really well with that too. Um, so yeah, on to some of the sets. Share my screen as I say every time. Uh, so the first set that I was talking about just a little bit ago was Nido King. Uh, I talked to Anza about running this actually. Uh, you want to run him with a Life Orb and Sheer Force and Earth Power, and then any combination of Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Sludge Wave. Uh, for the best coverage, you want to go with Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam, but you can toss Sludge Wave in there, depending on your opponent's team, and that gives him another stab option as well. Um, with the Life Orb and Sheer Force, if you are attacking with any of these moves, Life Orb will not take away any of your health, because Sheer Force takes away the extra effect of any of these moves, but increases their power, uh, but it also takes away the recoil of Life Orb. So basically with this, you have a one point... I'm trying to think of the calculation. 1.7 or so boost on any of these attacks off of a 300 base special attack, which is nothing to sneeze at, plus you have incredible coverage with ground, fire, electric, and ice moves on that. And getting a, a, a speed pass to him was certainly going to help. Um, kind of average speed, but with one or two of them baton pass to him, it's it's going to hurt. Yeah, and, and he really has enough bulk to take a move or two to. Yeah. So if you can be going first with all that speed and you can still take an attack, it's going to be hard for your, po for your opponent to take down Nido King without taking some serious damage first. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. The other move set I had was Smeargle. Uh, like we said, he ran Shell Smash Baton Pass the first match, uh, but I recommended him a little bit different set. You want to run Spore on Smeargle almost all the time because if you can get it off, that's a free uh, sleeping Pokemon on your opponent's team that really can't do much of anything. Um, as long as they don't have Grass types to absorb the Spore, you're going to get that off and basically have a free crippled Pokemon on the other team. Um... Sticky Web works okay on Smeargle. Uh, I'm not sure if that's absolutely the option you want to go with, because with Baton Pass you're going to have, you know, speedy Pokemon anyways. Yeah. But it does give you the option of not having to Baton Pass speed to everyone on your team. Uh, and so it can definitely work with supporting Azumarill and Nido King and, and those kinds of Pokemon by slowing down the opposing team. If you run Sticky Web, your, your main goal is probably speed control. Um, yeah. 100% speed control. So, yeah. So that, yeah, that's definitely a good option for his team since he can control it with those speed boosts. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about using Stealth Rock. I think it really helps his team because with if, with any successful sweep, you need to break sashes. Yes. Uh, and get get a little bit of damage on them so that you have a lot easier time sweeping. So. If you get Stealth Rocks out with Smeargle immediately, your team stands a lot better chance of pulling off a sweep at the end of the game. Uh, and then, since he has a Focus Sash, I recommend putting something on there like Destiny Bond, which, you know, if you outspeed your opponent um, and you have 1% left and can pull off a Destiny Bond, get a free kill. Yeah. Uh, you, you can put any number of things in that slot. You could really put Spikes if you wanted to. You could... Um, you could decide to smash pass still and take out Sticky Web or something like that. But Smeargle has any number of options, uh, all of which are good. You always want to run max speed on him and max HP. Yep. And that's that's all about about all I have to say about Smeargle. And then the last set, uh, his other support Pokemon uh, is going to be Scolipede. Uh, I would try to run Scolipede just as supporty as possible. You can run Megahorn and Poison Jab on him. But really, I think he's a lot better if you're running Sword Stance and Substitute on him so you can deal with various uh, options and choices that you have in a match. If you think mm -hmm. you're going to be trying to pass to Nido King and you can set up, set up a Substitute, Nido King behind a Substitute with Speed Boost is going to be terrifying. Uh, 
Uh, if you can set up a sword stance and pass that to Garchomp or Azumarill or Drapion, that's also going to be terrifying. They're going to have a lot more power to get through a sweep with yep. that. I think also we, we discussed the because he has such support with Smeargle and Scolipede, whether or not Belly Drum was the right option for Azumarill as well, because Azumarill does get things like Super Power and Play Rough, and if you're extremely fast, you have that speed control under your belt, uh, that coverage can definitely rip holes in other teams. So you don't always have to look at things like Belly Drum, Citrus Berry, or whatever in order to do damage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, he did run belly, belly drum uh, in the match against me, and it ended up, again, terrifying me, and I thought he could definitely pull off the sweep, um, but Tentacruel ended up being able to handle anything he could throw at me. But if you don't run belly drum, like Richard said, uh, you have the option for things like uh, Assault Dust, uh, yep. which m turns uh, Azumarill from bulky to bulkier. Um, you can max attack and either max speed for baton pass uh, receptions, or you can max your special defense. Um, and that's basically just going to turn Azumarill into an even tankier Pokemon that can, you know, have Waterfall, Play Rough, Super Power, and Aqua Jet, um, which gives you the priority you need with Aqua Jet, but also gives you the coverage options you need um, with Play Rough and Super Power. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's definitely something to think about. Belly Drum Azumarill is... I think a really good Pokemon to toss into your team occasionally. If right. you always run Belly Drum Azumarill, it's going to be predictable and people are going to know to be ready for it. But if you run something like Assault Vest every once in a while and don't run Belly Drum, uh, they're going to have to handle that a lot differently. I always felt that once I used Belly Drum, Azumarill had maybe one, two attacks in, and then that was kind of it. Um, yeah. Aqua Jet just doesn't have the power you need sometimes, yeah. even at plus six. Yeah, I, I always really struggled using Azumarill on my team last year. Uh, I remember Jeremy and Peasley said, oh, this, I just thought, no, there's no way I suck at using Azumarill. I only drafted him because he was the best Pokemon available at the time. Um, he's tough to use if your opponent knows a Belly Drum is coming. If they don't know Belly Drum is coming, and you can keep them guessing with that, that's going to help you a lot. And if you have the option to make him a little bit bulkier and try to diss out damage... Um, and then not just sweep, then you have that option as well. I guess the biggest recommendation is just mix it up. You have um, you have this, a speed passer with Scolipede, and you have Smeargle who does anything you want him to. So just mix it up, change your team to, to fill those uh, different status uh, Pokemon, and... You can definitely keep other players on their toes and not let them know what to expect, whether it's a bulkier Azumarill or something that's going to be far more offensive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, your main strategy is going to be to, you know, obviously we've talked about it to death, uh, but you want to speed, uh, baton pass speed to your sweepers and just kind of try to get through teams that way. You're, I battled uh, Anza's team, and it was terrifying because every time I took down really threatening offensive Pokemon, I was like, all right, that's out of the way, good. Another one just came right back up, and I had to immediately think of how to deal with that one. So you have a team with a lot of offensive pressure that is very scary to face, and you can definitely use that against your opponents. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that pretty much covers it. Um, this was our first Teams of the Week segment, so let us know how we did. Uh, we kind of want to keep this an open dialogue. Um, if you have questions on some of the movesets we talked about, uh, questions for your team about suggestions that we have and recommend recommendations for improvements that we have, uh, feel free to comment on the YouTube page for that or on the Facebook page where Jeremy and Peasley will be posting this eventually. Um, yeah, just, just ask us questions, keep the dialogue going, give us your suggestions. We'll be happy to hear them. Uh, and we will see you next week. Next week we'll be covering... Uh, Zachary O'Connor with the Speedwagon Foundation, Matt Blackout with My Name's Blacka, Brett Gordy with the Pittsburgh Porygons, and DJ Challingsworth with Swana Lake. So if you're one of those teams, look forward to that, and we'll see you then. All right, see ya. Thanks, guys.